Hey Beans, welcome to Holy Dough. Thank you so much. After you Beans, let's go make some pizza. So our pizza, we ferment our dough up to 48 hours to four days. So it's nice, light and fluffy, chewy, so it breaks down into your body and it doesn't make you as bloated as what a normal pizza would, would probably make you. So I'm very excited to show you and make some pizza today. When making pizza at the house or at your home, like you can use all-purpose flour. We use a very fine flour, Doppio Zero flour imported from Italy. So it's high in protein. Mm -hmm. It allows us to, to actually ferment our dough. Mm -hmm. So when after two days or even four days when you're making the dough, um, it's less watery and it allows to break down easier when you eat it. I love using stone ground flour at home. Something like that would work well. You can use stone ground flour, yes. Like I said, all-purpose flour for a homemade pizza should taste wonderful. You know, like we just like to really take pizza to the next level here and showcase what pizza can be. We also do realize that like the type of pizza that we do make, uh, people are not used to. So we need to educate people on the type of pizza that we make. When we found this spot in Strand, like we had to decide what are we gonna do, you know? And like I wanted to add value to the community and I figured you know the best way to add value is to make pizza because that's what everybody loves. So now beans, what you would want to do is you want to dissolve the yeast into the water and okay. just kind of spread it out evenly. You Does know. this need to be warm water? Water from the tap should be sufficient. Like you want to get your hands in there, right? Oh. And let it just kind of dissolve oh, in the water. Sure. What we're going to do is just mix to combine, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to add the water and then you're just going to keep on stirring for me. So again, as I said, mix to combine. Beans, you're doing a wonderful job there like a trooper, <laughs> like you've done it before. Now what we're going to do is wrap some olive oil in the bowl. I'm going to put this in here. Now we're going to let it rest for about 15 minutes or so. So will the dough rise now in this 15 minutes or is it mainly just to get it to the ingredients to kind of form together nicely? 15 minutes is a very short time period. So, so it's, it's not for it's, rising? It's not really for rising. It's just going to formulate and kind of just form together. But like we'll kind of give it about 15 minutes and we'll see how it goes. And then we'll knead it for a bit, and then uh, it should form nice, two round dough balls. So how do you know when it's a good pizza dough? So generally, if you if you cook the pizza and like you break open the crust and it smells yeasty or it smells acidic, then you kind of know it's not it's not where it should be. And depending on the day, if it's raining or if the sun is shining, like you have to constantly taste the dough to make sure it's in a good, workable condition. Let's look at the dough and then let's start kneading. Yeah. Kneading. Kneading. So let's get a bit of flour on our hands. No five, half five. <laughs> now we're going to start kneading it. And all that you want to do is just kind of with the palm of your hand, just kind of stretch it out and lift. It's basically what you do. You know, you're just kind of getting all the air out of the dough and just kind of kneading it. And then, yeah, off you go. So like we like to make as much as possible in-house. So our olives, we go and hand pick once a year. Oh, so, wow. so in our lately we got about 120 kgs of olives that, that we made ourselves, you know. And then we eventually put into containers of olive oil and mm. rosemary and some garlic. And then we mm, make yeah. our own chili, our yearly, our whole filter tomato sauce, and we got our own holy sauce as well. You know, like we like to keep things or do things in-house. Yes. And we can control the quality of it, which we love. Well, I think people can taste the love in it too. So now what we want to do is make it round. Just kind of put it into a bit of a ball, kind of shape. And then once we got into a bowl, we just cut it into half. What we want to do now, this is the fine process. This is what you like to do with, with the kids at the house and kind of keep them occupied. We just want to shape this. So what you want to do is just pull it. So you kind of pull it almost okay. that it becomes a bit smooth. And then you just want to fold it in. I think. For me, what I love to do is I come in the morning early and we make the dough and I make the dough balls and for me it just kind of feeds my soul. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like having Bible study, you know, it's just, you know, It's talking, like therapeutic time. Yeah, talking to God almost in a way, you know, just and then once everybody comes in at 10 o'clock, then you leave. Yeah. <laughs> and then your day starts. We, we obviously want to wrap it. Okay. So we got this nice big little bad boy <laughs> and I still think it comes from my like grandfather from like 50 years ago. Like he used to have a bakery. Really? And I think this is still part of his bakery stuff. Wow. 
Now we want to put it into the fridge and we're going to leave this for about 24 hours. So let's put it into the fridge. So that's actually something nice to prepare, like if you're going to have a pizza night, you can maybe prepare the dough a day or two in advance and then leave it in the fridge. You can definitely do that and if you're too lazy to do that, you can always come to Holy Dough and come right. and buy some dough. <laughs> So I, I'm going to put the flour onto the dough balls now, just to loosen it up slightly, just to get it out of the container. So this is how your dough balls will look after about two days of fermenting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chuck a bit of flour onto the dough, just to kind of loosen it up slightly. And you can use a spatula for this as well if you want to. So what you can always do with the bubbles, you just kind of, you just pop them. So now what you want to do is like you want to make the dough round. You want to always keep it a nice little shape, nice little round shape. You'll see the pocket starting to shape. You can flip it, you can also do that. You can just kind of stretch it out slightly, make it round. We're going to put on some whole peel tomatoes. You want to take one or two scoops. Yeah. Then you kind of just twist from the inside outside, just make it in circular motions, kind of keep it around, but not go onto the edges. So what we want to do now is, you want to just make sure that you have a fire. So maybe Beans, I'm going to give you the honors of just kind of grabbing two pieces of wood. Well done. <laughs> I think it's important to note that you don't want to let this stand for too long, otherwise yeah. it's going to stick and like, like you won't be able to spade it. Okay. You want a nice flame in the oven mm -hmm. because that will allow your pockets of your pizza to pop a bit. Okay. And you'll have that nice little bubble shape. So Beans, what you want to do now is take this fleur de latte cheese and just break it up and just spread it out evenly onto the pizza. So what you want to do now is you want to put the basil, kind of break the basil up, we source all our ingredients fresh. I even have a little herb garden at the house where I get most of my basil and rocket from. So now that we have the basil, we just want to drizzle some olive oil on here. Give it a bit of je ne sais quoi. We're going to take some parmesan and just kind of chuck it over. Okay. Just a little extra bit of flavor. Mm. Just because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> so now what we want to do is always make sure your oven is clean. Okay. Right, so our oven is clean currently. So we normally blow it with this copper pot. So now to get the pizza on, this is the fun and tricky part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you want to get the flour on here so it doesn't stick. Then you want to just kind of rub it a bit. Now to get the pizza. Okay, stretch it out a little bit. So you get the size. Wow. Well, you make it look so easy. Of the spade. So now we're just kind of stretching it out, making sure that everything is nice and evenly spread out. And now we want to spade it. What we want to do is we want to just twist it around a bit. So this is where the flame really comes into play. We put a nice little burn. Oh, that's amazing. So now we just flip it here. And we've got a pizza. Well done. Wow. There we go. Yeah. A margarita. Best pizza. Mm. We can drizzle this bit of holy sauce on there. What is holy sauce? Wow. Ooh, this is way too much. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of let it just slide onto the rest of the pizza. There we go. So that's just kind of a mild chili sauce that we like to make. I like to call it the people sauce. And uh, it just adds a bit of flavor. Oh my word, that is amazing. It feels like I've traveled all the way to Italy. It really does when I eat this. Thanks so much for showing us how to make these delicious artisan pizzas. Oh, I really good. appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Happy cooking, see you next time. Be sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos.